notice you get the same cast of characters in your classroom every year? You know, the first year you taught, you thought, I have some weird little kids in here, but I'll, I'll matriculate them out of here in June, and next year they'll be gone. Next year, same kids, different bodies. You know, same little characters come walking in, and you think, didn't I have you last year in a different body? <laughs> but I say to these high school teachers, just be glad you're not an elementary school teacher. Elementary school teacher doesn't just take roll. They've got lunch money. They've got book club money. They've got milk money. They've got trip money. When you graduate, they ought to give you one of those nickel-dime quarter changers that you use on it. <laughs> on a streetcar and just go around and spend the first five money. Let's see, you had the special lunch and the chocolate milk. Did you bring your dollar and a half for the field trip? Just change money for the first five, 10 minutes of the period. I don't care. I have never known a bunch of kids who said, would you please have the highest standards possible so that I can turn out the maximum work this year? I've never seen that. And they, they have all these skills they use, you know, in order to back you down. You know, there's the eye roll. We're going to have a signed seating. 30 kids go, oh. <laughs> Watching. Yes, I was. I wasn't. Were I too. Was too. <laughs> Is this a stupid conversation? <laughs> and finally it boils down. Were too. Was not. Were too. Was not. First rule of back talk. Takes one fool to back talk. It takes two fools to make conversation out of it. In a classroom, I call it smiley face. You say the kid's name and the kid responds like this. Fred. You ever seen that face look back at you? <laughs> oh, let me off the hook. I'm so cute. You ever have a kid in your class that thought they could just skate through education by being cute? They don't follow the rules. They don't do the work, but boy, are they cute. We all know that having a great sense of humor is good for us. A sense of humor helps keep things in perspective. Laughter matters, especially when it also helps us learn this much about ourselves and our classrooms. Well, I've He's, he's so funny to listen to, and he doesn't put you, make you feel guilty for the, the past mistakes that you've made. He makes like, it's okay, it's okay to start. But his humor in there, it makes us say, oh, that's me, I've done that, and laugh at ourselves. And not say, dummy, I did it wrong. But in that, yeah, we've all been there, we've all done that, and it's okay, we now have a new way. And I think that's what his humor does. It makes us comfortable, and it makes us human beings. As the reason everybody howls is because they see themselves in the situations he is describing. Uh, and it makes light of probably things that have bothered you for a long time. When a professional development experience that truly improves the lives of its participants is also this much fun, learning has become as good as it gets. So many people just deal in the theory of uh, education, of discipline and instruction, but Fred gets right into the nuts and bolts and puts it in a language teachers can understand and implement into their classrooms. He makes it practical. When I can use these strategies in the front of the gym at an assembly with 300 students and be effective, it sends a very powerful and clear message to the teachers that yes, it can work. And, you know, this works with the toughest kids. It's not just something you can use with a kindergartner or a first grader in, in the school. It works for these uh, teenagers that are, are in the juvenile system for, for some pretty serious crimes. There's no doubt that uh, Dr. Jones's program is very effective for 7 through 12. Uh, it can be implemented at all ages. It makes teaching fun. It makes teaching possible. It's not hard work. You're able to have the students on task. You're able to accomplish so much in a short period of time because you're not spending your time nagging. Welcome to your front row seat for the Tools for Teaching Video Toolbox. Your chance to experience Dr. Fred Jones for yourself. You ever seen this in your class? Breaks your heart, doesn't it? Now the problem with this position, this is known as the beginner position, the problem with this position is that the blood drains out of your hand and it starts to go numb and then you get a pin prickly feeling all over the skin. Now what if I'm on the far side of the room and before the teacher gets to that side of the room they're going to help this kid for three or four minutes, this kid for three or four minutes, maybe another kid for three or four minutes. You get tired of holding your hand up for ten minutes waiting to get help. It becomes evident in just a few minutes that Dr. Jones knows what's going on in our classrooms. So this kid's thinking, there's got to be an easier way to be a student in a classroom. And one day they look up, 
and some kid models the answer for them. And it looks like this. <laughs> you ever seen this one? This is called half-mast. And the beauty with half-mast is that the blood returns to my hand, and I can hold this forever.